Finally, we are back to Cartridge Wars. It has been a while as I've got distracted with other videos that I wanted to bring to you guys, but we're nearing the end of this thing. In fact, today we're gonna knock out two slots. We're gonna talk about that 308 versus 300 RCM and some of the bigger sevens. So in a recent video, I said this. You can never go wrong with 7 mag. I know everybody always says 30-06, just go with the 30-06. For me, it's 7 mag, just go with the 7 mag. And it got a lot of you wondering, why? Why the 7 mag instead of the 30-06? Well, let's look at the numbers. 7 mag, shooting about a 150 grain bullet, which is very common for that, versus a 30-06, shooting a 180 grain bullet, which is also very common for that cartridge. Let's first take a look at the trajectory of both. So you'll see the 7 mag just has it outpaced. It's shooting a little bit of a higher BC bullet here. It's shooting about 200 feet per second faster. It just plain beats. Then let's take a look at wind drift. As you can see, the 7 mag also tends to take the cake here versus the 30-06. Ballistically, it's just better. I mean, it's shooting faster, right? Then you look at the difference in energy and foot-pounds of energy between the two of them, and the amount of thump they're putting on the target is nearly identical. The 7 Mag maybe has the slightest advantage out to extreme distances, but for all intents and purposes, they're the same. But there's always a trade-off. It's impossible to win in anything. There's always a give and take. And so we look at recoil. Now there is a recoil advantage to 30-06 and 7 mag, but honestly it's so small that I think if I were shooting blindfolded and I shot one and then the other, I don't know if I could tell you which is which. I mean, they're so very similar. I can't tell the difference between a 7 mag and a 30-06 recoil. They're very, very close. So why would they be so close when the other numbers showed sig significant advantages on the other side of the teeter-totter, right? And the reason is it's shooting a lighter bullet, a smaller caliber. And so the thing that I love about the sevens is just how well it balances all of these numbers where we're trying to fit in, you know, the right amount of recoil, but enough speed and power and everything else. Every time I look at this of just like what the best general big game cartridges are, I tend to kind of look around the sevens. Um, they just seem to be an excellent balance. So you can tell I'm a big fan of the 7 rim mag, but is the 7 rim mag specifically the best, you know, long action magnum 7 that there is? Well, today in Cartridge Wars, you need to vote to find out. So first, let's look at a few criteria. So first, we're going to take a look at popularity that usually has something to do with availability in terms of chamberings and rifles and ammo availability. So if I take 82 of the most popular centerfire rifle cartridges and I rank them from most popular, which is by way, by the way, the 308. Uh, it would certainly be the 223 if we were talking about semi-automatic, but if we're talking about just bolt action, the number one is 308. And we go way down the list to the least popular, which I can't remember right now what it is. How would the seven rim mag rank there in terms of popularity? Well, it's actually number nine out of 82. 7 mag is a very, very popular cartridge, even though it's, whatever, 75 years old now. The Weatherby cartridge that is also here in Cartridge Wars, um, the 7 Weatherby mag, would rank number 57 out of 82. The 7 millimeter STW would be 71 out of 82. And the 7 WSM, 79 out of 82. <sighs> the 7 WSM is a good cartridge. It really is. Um, it's a short action, which a lot of people will value today. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. It has great ballistics, very much to match the 7 rem mag. There's really not a whole lot wrong with it. It does have a little bit of a short neck, but it has just dive bombed. It's just not popular at all. A lot of the WSM cartridges were really well designed, but were held back with lawsuits and different things. And for whatever reason, the marketing just died on those things. And so 7WSM is just nearly gone uh, because of popularity and availability. 
All right, next category that I want to take a look at to see which of these cartridges is best is taking a look at barrel length. This is one that I really started considering about a year ago when I got a suppressor. Uh, suppressors are a complete game changer, but they are adding significantly to the barrel length. And so where things used to be 24 or 6 and 26 inch barrels, now I really think the future is 20 or 22 inch barrels on rifles. And the reason I think the 7 rim mag and, and uh, most of these other cartridges here that are long actions are probably going to slowly decline over the next few years is because of suppressors. Now with 90 day returns from the ATF for tax stamps, I think suppressors are going to explode on the market. And suddenly everybody's going to be looking at the cartridges that can give them shorter barrel lengths. So I spent like a day and a half uh, a few months ago, like trying to find a formula that could inform a recommended or, or best barrel length for each one of the cartridges. And following that, that formula, the 7 rim mag would need a 25.25 inch barrel. And that's normal when you see a 7 mag, it's probably about 60% of them are 24 inch barrels and 40% of them are 26 inch barrels. And that's what the formula here shows as well. The 7 Weatherby mag, same, 25.25 inches. The 7 STW, that's a long skinny powder of, of uh, column of powder, 26.25 inch barrel. Because the 7 WSM is S, it's a short magnum, um, it allows you to get down to a 23 inch barrel. And so that as I've been seeing a ton of comments every time I talk about long action, short action, people are saying, it doesn't matter. I think it does. I think it matters a lot right now because of this. And I do think that's the Achilles heel of the seven rim mag going forward is people may not want to choose it as much as soon as they start shooting or hunting suppressed. All right, next let's take a look at velocity between these four cartridges. So uh, I'm using for this Hornady's 11th edition manual. And if we put a 162 grain ELDX in all of these, these are about the velocities we could see. Um, you know, they're all so similar. You know, that Weatherby's gonna give you a little bit extra. Even with the Magnum length cartridge, the STW is so skinny, it's really not getting you any real advantage. Um, and the WSM is a tiny bit lower, but essentially, I mean, these are all so close, it makes not a whole lot of difference. The 7 Mag is gonna be deadly to an elk at 600 yards. And so, do I really care if one of them has an extra 150 foot pounds? Ah, probably not. Okay, drop. Uh, because of the speed, um, there is going to be slight differences in the bullet drop, but out to 400 yards, they're all going to drop within three inches of each other. One real problem with the sevens is um, we don't have a lot of new entrants in the sevens. I have news about that, by the way, about a new seven we might be seeing this fall. I think I'm going to talk about that maybe in my next video or a or very soon upcoming one when we talk about the 6.8 Western. Man, I, I got some juice about the 6.8 Western. I talked to some very interesting people at SHOT Show and I learned some things that I did not know. So we're talking about that soon. Okay, so the twist rate on all these, I mean, they're all between, you know, nine and 10. Hornady recommends a one in 9.5 twist to go over 160 grains. And so that's a real problem with these sevens is, you know, you compare something like a 6.8 Western to these sevens and you say, well, it's a larger caliber bullet. We should be able to get heavier bullets, but you really can't because they don't have the twist straights. So now let's take a look for cartridge wars as you guys are picking between these two. First, the seven millimeter Weatherby. Well, I think the problem here is it's very overbore, like many of the, of the Weatherby cartridges. Um, but okay, there are merits and drawbacks to that. I think the bigger problem here is ammo is absurdly priced. When we get into these ammo crunches, 
you want a lot of manufacturers making the different types of ammo that you want to buy so that there's some competition and they drop the price, right? That's why 308 ammo is so cheap right now compared to everything else because everybody loads for 308. But here, I mean, while Norma and Federal do load for the 7, mil 7 Weatherby mag, they don't do much. In fact, I haven't been able to find any available. You're pretty much just relying on Weatherby. And so with one company and very hot demand, prices go crazy. They're wanting over five bucks a shot for this stuff. Um, no, thank you. Okay, then we take a look at the 7WSM. This is an awesome cartridge. This should be a lot more popular than it is. It does have a little bit of a short neck, and some people are saying that's not going to stabilize these longer bullets. Um, I don't know if that's valid or not, but the cartridge is basically dead. It's very hard to get your hands on anything 7WSM. We look at the 7 Rem Mag. You guys know I love it. Um, but like some of these others, I think the Achilles heel going forward is the long barrel lengths that it requires. And then we go to the 7 STW. I just don't think this thing has any chance of having any kind of resurgence because it requires a magnum length action. So we have our short action and our long or standard action. And then this one is, you know, it's almost 3.6 inches in length and that puts it in that magnum uh, action length. And so it's just much harder for companies to cham chamber for this. We're getting even heavier guns. It's this skinny little column of powder, so we have to use long barrel lengths. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense by today's standards. So which of these four cartridges should continue on? You decide, but there's also one thing. Um, looking forward in Cartridge Wars, we have 308 win versus the 300 RCM. I don't know if I want to do a whole video on that. The 300 RCM is, for all intents and purposes, dead. Um, and so my vote is to just kind of give the 308 win a buy for its first week. Uh, I probably should have just combined those in to do one big um, 300 cal vid video, but I, I, I don't like how I separated it. So my vote is that we just give the 308 a buy for week one. Um, we talk about the 6.5s next, and then we kind of put all this together and see who wins. So your vote for the best seven, and if we should give the 308 a buy. The way to vote is not by commenting, it is by clicking um, to the to the poll uh, so that I can get numbers of, of what won. Thanks guys, see ya.